guys! Miss Mandy with the Huntsville Madison County Public Library here bringing you another STEM video. Now STEM means science, technology, engineering, and math. And today we're gonna cover a little bit of the math. <gasps> I know math, right? It's not that bad. This isn't school. There's not gonna be a test. Okay, so today let's start by talking about the different kinds of shapes we can have, okay? So you can have a, everybody knows what 3D means, right? I mean, you're like, that movie was so cool. That movie was so cool. It was totally in 3D. It was awesome. Well, what does the D in 3D mean? It means dimensional. So it's a three-dimensional movie when you see a 3D movie, okay? Well, if there's a 3D, then there has to be a 1 and a 2D, right? All right. Going to go to our little board here. Okay. So, a 1D shape. Okay. So, one-dimensional shape. 1D. What kind of shape is that? That's it. All done. That is a 1D shape. One-dimensional straight line. There's no corners, there's no edges, there's no curves, nothing. One dimension, all right? A two-dimensional shape or a 2D shape, those are the shapes you're used to drawing. Things like your triangle, your circle, your square, those are 2D shapes. So you're giving them some angles, some edges, or curves, but they're still flat on the paper, okay? What about that 3D shape? Three-dimensional, 3D. All right, it's been a while since I've drawn one of these. Let's see if I can do it. I'm gonna try and draw a cube, okay? So you need a square, and you want another square. You're gonna connect them. And then this one gets a little dotted line. <gasps> it's a cube. That's my try to 3D shape there. So a three-dimensional shape is like a cube or dice. Dice are 3D, right? Because I could draw a triangle on my palm, but you can't see it from the side. 3D means it comes up. It is three-dimensional like dice. Fun fact, dice is plural, one is called a die. I'm just gonna say dice so it's not confusing. But a three-dimensional object is something like dice or an ice cream cone. Like if you think of like the old-fashioned ice cream cone where you put your ice cream in it, it's round at the top, but then it tapers down to really pointy point at the bottom, that's a cylinder. That is another three-dimensional shape, okay? So now that we know what 3D means, we're gonna talk about some three-dimensional shapes. It might just blow your mind. It did mine. Now there's something called a polyhedron. What? Huge word. Polyhedron just means it's a 3D shape with a flat surface. All the faces are flat, okay? It has straight edges and sharp corners. That's it. So this is a polyhedron, okay? So 3D shape, Flat faces, straight edges, sharp corners. Now, polyhedron, poly just means many, okay? Hedron means shape. So a polyhedron is many shapes. Now, you could count them and give it like an actual name. So, a, let's see, dice. One, two, three, four, five, six sides. So this dice has six sides. Well, the abbreviation or whatever you want to call it for the number six is hexa. So this is a six-sided shape. So it's a hexahedron. If it only had five sides, it'd be a pentahedron. If it had seven, heptahedron. And if it had eight, does anybody know what that would be? An octahedron, like an octopus. It has eight of something, okay? So polyhedron, many sides. You can get specific if you count the sides. 
all right? Now there's something else this would also qualify. It's called a platonic solid. Now that's a 3D shape where each face is the same shape, okay? Dice, what shape? Square, right? Square, 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 square. All six of these sides are squares. So it's a hexahedron, but it's also a platonic solid. Now there's only five of them. I love this, it's so colorful. I had to print it out because it was so pretty. So these are platonic solids. These are the only ones that there are, okay? Now a platonic solid is a 3D shape where all the faces are the same shape. So you have this tetrahedron where all the sides are triangles, okay? You have the octahedron. What did octo mean again? Eight, like an octopus. So an octahedron has eight sides, but all these sides are triangles, which makes it a platonic solid. You kind of see where I'm going with this, okay? You can have a, any Dungeons and Dragon fans out there, a dodecahedron. <gasps> Dodeca means 12. <clears throat> so a 12-sided shape. And all the sides are, let's see, one, two, three, four, five-sided pentahedron. So five-sided shapes, or five-sided shapes make up the faces of it. Well, today, we, we're going to go for the big gun. We're going to go for the icosahedron. Icosa meaning 20, 20 sides. And we're going to make one. It's going to be super cool. And you're going to turn it into a Christmas ornament by adding string. That's all you got to do. All right, so icosahedron. That's a polyhedron that has 20 sides. So it's a three-dimensional object with 20 sides. All right, let's make one of these. First, you need 20 sides, okay? Well, the easiest thing to cut out, because we're going to make it 3D, remember, circles. So, I have a cool little circle punch. It's like a giant hole punch. So all my circles are the same size. If you don't have a cool hole punch, get you a craft roll, toilet paper roll, TP roll. Use it to trace you some circles, okay? If you want bigger circles than that, you can. Find like a small glass, because this is like two inches across, which this isn't quite that, but it's close enough. So you need 20 circles all the same size, okay? Then, Oops. You're going to fold the edges to make like a triangle, okay? So, are you ready? Here we go. So, you take your circle and you're going to fold till you get that nice little point, okay? And you're just going to lay it down. Now, try to make all your sides even because we're going for equilateral triangles, meaning all the sides are equal. That's really hard to do, so we're going to do the best we can. So, I took the circle, folded two of the sides, gave him a nice little point up there, okay? Now we need to fold this up to make another side. So you just kinda, I'm gonna stick my fingernail in there, see if I can get me a nice little point. So we're going for equal here. I'm gonna try and make it as equal as I can. All right. That's probably the hardest part right there. Okay, so we now have a circle that when you fold the edges, make a triangle. And how many faces did that icosahedron have? 20. So you have to do this to all 20 of those circles, okay? I'm not gonna make you watch me do that. I got a head start, okay? So once you fold all these up, We'll fold a few more. I think I had four left that I needed to fold. So we'll do it again. So you get your point. You fold your sides down. Okay, just like that. And you're going to take your bottom and fold it up. You get a nice little point on both sides. Okay, and then unfold them a little bit. And you got two more. I promise I'm not going to make you watch me fold all 20 of these. Right. Oop, that one didn't get too much of a point there. Sometimes you have to refold. Okay. And then the bottom. 
Remember, the goal is to make them equal, but uh, we're human, so <laughs> gotta make mistakes. It may not be exactly equal, but we're trying to get it as close as we can get. Because you're gonna have to put these things together like a puzzle, but like one of the easiest puzzles you've ever done. Okay. Last circle I have to fold. Make a nice point. Bring the bottom up. All right, so now that we've got our circles into triangle-like shapes, glue stick works best. If all you have is the squeezy glue, you can do it, but it's gonna take a while because you're gonna have to let it dry. So glue stick is best. Mine is purple. Uh, dries clear though. All right, so you need five of these first, okay? One, two, three, four, five. Move the other ones to the side. Okay, so what you want to do is glue all of your sides together. Just like that, okay? So, I'm going to put some glue on it. And stick the sides together. Try and get the corners even. Ah, it keeps sliding. There we go. So try and get to where corner and corner are even. Okay. And you can hold it if you want. You can count to 10. I'm not going to do that. All right. So I'm just going to squeeze it. Boom. There's two of them. Okay. Now put some glue on this side and you just keep going until you have all five of them stuck together. Sometimes it's easier to do it upside down. Corner to corner. And you're gonna hold it. Let it dry just, or let it stick really well. There you go, you got three. All right, and put some glue on this side. You're just kind of going around in a circle, like all the outside edges. All right, let's see, I flip up. Corner to corner, like up. All right, I got one left because I said five, right? So we're gonna do this right here. And <laughs> it's got writing on the back of my paper on that one. Oh, by the way, I used scrapbooking paper for this. You can use construction paper if that's all you have. You can use old Christmas cards if you want to. Make sure that's okay with mom and dad before you start cutting up their Christmas cards because I don't want them mad at me. I was gonna send those out this year. Okay, so you've got all five of them. Okay, I haven't glued it together yet. I'm gonna wait on that. Okay, so it looks like a tiny little hat. Okay, so that's what you should have. Now, these other circles that we still have, you're going to connect and just make one more little leg, okay? So, I'm gonna do the bottom, if you wanna call it that, since we said it looked like a little hat. A little bottom flap there. And still corner to corner, just like you've been doing. Okay. Starting to look like geometry. <gasps> it's a math word. All right. Bottom of this one. Now, this is technically an inverted or inside out icosahedron because it's easier to glue that way. It's easier to show you how to glue it that way. You can do it the other way. That one's too big. You can do it the other way around where the white would be on the outside. I think it's kind of cool to see all these little pieces sticking up, but you can do it the other way too so it's nice and smooth on the outside. Hello. One of my cats decided to join me. She wants to know what all this stuff is on the kitchen counter. All right, we're getting close, I promise. All right. Still, ah, corner to corner, if it will stop moving. All right. Okay. And I have 
two more. So one, two, they're gonna fit right there. I'm just adding to the bottom of the hat, if you will. This is why I didn't connect it together. Makes it a little easier to move it around that way. one to the bottom of this one. Just like so. Oh, come on. Corner to corner. This is why you want them as equal sided as you can get. Oh, hello Kara. <laughs> I've heard that people love to see appearances from my cats in these videos, which is why I don't lock them in the bedroom. Okay, so You've added to your little hat, you've given it little points on all of the bottom pieces of the hat, okay? Now, I went ahead and did the other half before this video. <laughs> so now we just need to join them together, okay? So now I'm going to glue these together. Actually, maybe easier. No, we'll glue it together. All right, so here we go. And all I did was make two of these, okay? So they're two of the exact same things. It's like half of the ornament. So I started out with the one, two, three, four, five that made the little hat. And then I stuck some more to the bottom of the hat. This is the same exact thing. I just made two of them, okay? So if it's 20 sided and I have two, that probably means this is 10 circles we've folded into triangles and this is 10. So we need to put them together. All right, all about math today, which is unusual for me. I'm not a, not a huge fan of math. I can do it. I just don't find it very fun, but this is fun. All right, and then we're gonna just glue that little piece together. Ah, sticky. All right. And I can glue this little piece together. This is the one I made beforehand. Because as you can tell, the video would be way too long if I didn't. All right, and glue this one together. Make sure that glue sticks. It's really annoying when you start to put this together and they start popping off. That is not fun. Okay. Now. We have two of these really cool shapes. Oh, kind of looks like a star, doesn't it? That's cool. All right, so we have two of those, and all we need to do is glue them together. So it's going to piece together just like that. I won't make you watch me glue every single piece, but you can see how it will fit together once you get it put together. And it makes a really, really cool looking ornament. I will glue one side together, maybe two sides, so you can get an idea of what it's going to look like. Because I'm just now realizing that I didn't take my example off of my Christmas tree. It's still over there. So we're just going to glue this one together. All right. So got to stick them in like that. And you're just gluing it like puzzle pieces together. Okay. So you can see that it goes in like teeth. So they're just gonna go together just like so. And then you have an icosahedron Christmas ornament. You can, if you have a little hole punch, you can punch a little hole, tie a string through it, however you wanna hang it on your tree. You can just stuff it in the tree if you want to. So there you go. Math isn't always so bad. That's pretty cool, right? A nice three-dimensional Hosahedron ornament. So I hope you guys have fun with that and you can make them all different kinds of colors and you could like decorate a whole tiny Christmas tree with it if you wanted to. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you next time for another STEM video.